Transformers, witches in disguise. Transformers, more than meets the eyes. <laughs> I've tried that twice now and it didn't feel right either time. <laughs> Ah, welcome to Kick-Ass Switch, putting the K in magic. I'm Joanna DeVoe, and you are watching Makeup Vlog number 18. Makeup Vlog number 18. And this month's theme, June 2017, is transformation. That's why. That's why that stupid song. <laughs> I'm trying to perfect it. I sang it on a Patreon podcast when I was first announcing that the theme would be Transformers and I royally screwed that up. And I sang it just now, not well. <laughs> I think I need to try it on the public podcast and then my humiliation will be complete. Uh, but, but I have good things to share with you. Um, I got a list, I got a list right here in front of me. So I'm gonna follow the list so I don't ramble too much because I don't want this to be super duper duper long. I say that every time and every time I try to make it not super duper duper long, but I have an awesome haul. I got really cool things this month, which is funny in or this last month that I was decluttering. What I know for sure is when you declutter, you create a void and nature abhors a vacuum. And so it comes in, and it fills the void. <laughs> Um, so I really tried very hard not to buy a bunch of nonsense, which I don't normally do. I'm pretty uh, good about that. I don't think I've ever had like a spending problem or anything like that, but I got some really cool gifts and uh, I want to share them with you and then I have some cool recommendations. I also want to say before we get going too far into this that I am doing a giveaway right here, right now. What am I giving away? I'm giving away this, a signed copy of The Fortune Teller. And you might have caught the podcast episode I did a couple of months ago with the author of The Fortune Teller, Gwendolyn Womack. Uh, the book was just available for pre-order then, but it is officially out now. And 100%, if you are a book nerd like me, if you love tarot, you're gonna love this. I just feel like you're gonna love this. This book is gripping. It's a thriller. It reminds me of like the Da Vinci Code with a female pro protagonist. And it really centers around an ancient manuscript and um, traces the history of Tarot, the mythological history of Tarot, because we don't really know the history of Tarot. Um, it traces that all the way back to ancient Egypt and it is, it is good. It goes through like all the things you want to know. Um, Italy, Paris, the Romani, and uh, ancient Egyptians. It's so fabulous. And then modern day, the modern day portion is kind of like the Da Vinci Code uh, portion of the book. And also she has a knack for um, like moving from time period to time period or character to character without losing you. I always I'm very resistant to that when writers do that. I'm like, oh God, you know, cause you have to like get the feel, like the lay of the new land or this new character and it can be clunky and awkward, but it is not with her. And she invests so much in every character and every like era that you're in when you're reading. It is fascinating. And then when one, you know, uh, when you're leaving one character behind, you're so sad to see them go, but then the next one comes in and you're so happy to see them come in. It is an amazing book. It's a perfect summer read. So, since so many of us are tarot readers here, I thought a fun giveaway would go something like this. Like this video, <laughs> comment on this video, and to be entered into the giveaway, your comment has to specifically include this. If you are a tarot card, what tarot card would you be and why? And that's it. If you want to be entered twice, I'm going to put the names in a little thingy and uh, probably a little purse that I like to do these giveaways in. I do them on Facebook usually. I don't think I've done a YouTube giveaway. I dig around and I pull out a piece of paper with whoever the winner is. If you want to be enter entered twice, um, 
you got to go to someone else's comment and interpret their card for them and that's it that's the giveaway tanner and i he's never been to um a book launch party before and he hasn't gotten to do a lot of like adult things even though he is 23 so i was really excited to take him to the uh launch party for the book last night and he was really excited when we were pulling up um into the parking lot he goes don't pick your nose and don't stim like a note to self and it cracked me up stimming he has autism for those of you who don't know and stimul stimming is self-stimulating behavior and for him it's like he does this thing where he like twiddles his fingers and his body stiffs up and he makes like really bizarre facial expressions and he just does that when he gets really overwhelmed or when he's really excited and I had told him if you do a really good job at this party and, and you enjoy yourself both then we'll look for other things to do like this so I guess that was just his like okay keep it together <laughs> but uh, then they did a raffle and um, he was really into that. Like, you know, you pick your ticket and you keep half the ticket with you and you put the other half in the box. And um, when Gwen announced like the winners of the raffle, there were quite a few. He was like looking at his number so carefully, so carefully when, when she called his number out. <laughs> He's like, woohoo! It was like he had like won the Oscars and he went running up to get his prize and he was like so thrilled and so excited about his prize. And then uh, he really can't read well, but he's learning how to read and he's excited about that too. So she read the first two chapters out loud. And he's like taking the book and trying to match the words up while she's reading and um, I helped him out a little bit with that, but that was really cute. And then he got his first tarot reading from a professional tarot reader. They had a tarot reader set up in the back of Book Soup, which is where the, the party was. And um, I, don't know, I just thought that was cool. And I already have a copy of this. I have a copy before this cover. I got like an early copy before they settled on this cover. And when she sent this to me, I was like, you know what? I think I will share this with another book nerd here. And also, just enter the giveaway if you actually intend to read the book. If you are a book nerd or a tarot, a tarot nerd and you enjoy books. like So the person who gets this actually enjoys it. And I'm sorry to tell you, you have to be in the continental US to, to, for me to ship this sucker to you. So um, I would like to ship it worldwide. But it's just, it's too expensive, and um, so I'm just going to limit this contest to the continental U.S. Oh, and one other thing about this, she paints. And um, let me see, I got to check to see if you can see this, hold on. Oh, yeah, you totally can. She paints, and she's been painting um, tarot cards. I don't know what the purpose is, if she's just doing it for herself or if she wants to sell them at some point. Um, but she had like five or six, maybe more, of them for us to take one if we wanted, like lined up. So I got the fool. I think I'm gonna frame that because it's so cool. And I'm just excited about her as an author. I just, the book she did before this was called The Memory Painter and people love that. So I think I'm gonna read that next. Okay, what's next in the haul? I gotta look at my list here. And before I carry on, just know that there is gonna be a list down below of everything I mention in the blog post. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just click on the link to the blog post. If you're watching this on my blog, it's just right down below the video. But I'm mentioning so many things, I thought I better do links, I better do links. So people don't write to me like, where do I get this? How do I get that? It's all gonna be in the blog post. Uh, the next thing, this is not just a book haul, but there are a couple of books in it. Oh, I don't even have the book. Big Magic, Big Magic by Liz Gilbert. That is not, um, I already showed you Big Magic in a video I did recently on resistance. I was talking about uh, The War of Art by Steve Pressfield and Big Magic by Liz Gilbert. I said that I might do a book nerd post of that one day and I might. I don't know. There's a lot of books that would make amazing book nerd posts, but it's just time consuming to do one of those posts. So not all of the books that deserve to be book nerd posts are book nerd posts. <laughs> and Big Magic is one of them. 
But um, what I'm excited about is that my friend Amber and I, <clears throat> we drove to Santa Barbara to see Liz Gilbert speak. And it was such an epic, memorable trip. I have kind of this like pantheon of writer ladies in my head of these women that have become kind of sheroes in, in my life. Women that I admire because they're writers, but then they have this amazing connection on social media with their fans. They have this like ongoing conversation and they have really, really strong polarizing opinions, which is something that Sometimes I step into, but more often than not, I tried to hold back from because I don't like to like alienate people for political reasons, for example. And um, these women are just so on fire about their beliefs. And I guess they just don't give a shit if they offend you. <laughs> but women like Liz Gilbert, Cheryl Strait, um, Gwen Doyle, JK Rowling, and uh, are they all blonde? <laughs> the blonde writers of social media. <laughs> but Liz Gilbert, hearing her speak in person, I think I've literally heard every single interview of hers that you can find online. Because I think she's just, she's a great mind. She's a fantastic writer. I've re read um, most of her books. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, Eat, Pray, Love. She's the author of Eat, Pray, Love. Most people know her from that. But, um, Seeing her in person was different than listening to her on like a podcast interview or something. She is something else. She had the whole entire audience like sitting on the edge of their seat the entire time. And it was so cool. I'm always really moved by big crowds, you know, when everybody laughs at the same time or when people start singing along with each other or something like that. It always gets me choked up. And that happened a few times where I got kind of choked up because the crowd was like so with her that we were all together, like feeling the same emotions together. So we all laughed at the same time and we all like got teary eyed at the same time and it would just fall into complete silence at the same time where like you could hear a pin drop and we were all just riveted to what she was saying and she is so powerful. But one thing she was talking about that I wanted to share with you and I hope I get this right because it's been a month since um, since we did that, is she was talking about her take on the divine masculine and the divine feminine, the sacred masculine and the sacred feminine, however you wanna look at that. But um, she was saying in her sassy way, <laughs> she's like, Jesus is cool, Buddha is cool. Like I'm down with these people. I think she said other names, but those are the two that come to mind. Gandhi, I think she said. Like they're awesome, but they're teaching what women have known all along. The divine masculine, the sacred masculine is about coming into your innate femininity as a man, like embracing the feminine uh, values and virtues that women just naturally have. And the danger in that for women is that this is what the major religions have taught us. The major religions so many of us are grown up in, uh, that we grow up in, and not only that, but obviously, even if you grow up in an atheist house, these religions shape the culture and society's kind of world views. So you're getting this like through the media and school, and um, you know, we're just taught to like turn the other cheek and love your neighbor as yourself and to be very, very soft. And she was saying the danger in this is that women are already very, very soft. And what she sees is women doubling down on that softness to their detriment. And she's saying the divine feminine, the sacred feminine is the exact opposite. It's about boundaries saying no it's about um this, this is my words but it's about the sacred bitch it's about um embracing your masculine qualities right and because the masculine has to embrace the feminine the feminine has to embrace the masculine within to become whole because we have both within us within us when the primary spiritual teaching is to be soft and you're already soft you kind of get mowed over, right? So it's like, 
it's missing half of the equation and women have gotten this messed up message. So that was the thing that she talked about that hit me the hardest and that I found really compelling. I hope I conveyed that in a way that resonated with you because I'm I'm sure she said it better, but that's my take on it. <laughs> I also down below am going to link to the Violet Patisserie. Oh my, 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 my. If you are ever, if you live around Santa Barbara or you're ever going through Santa Barbara, I recommend this bakery, period, for anyone. But I'm mentioning it here, especially for people who have food sensitivities sensitivity to gluten in particular because we have to stick together those of us who don't eat gluten for whatever reason <laughs> the products and gluten-free things have really evolved over time when it when i first went gluten-free everything tasted like cardboard and you can find some pretty spectacular things but we all need to like shout it from the rooftop when we do <laughs> because it's still iffy right i'm telling you this dedicated gluten-free bakery and cafe in Santa Barbara, Lilac Patisserie, it's a French bakery, it will blow your mind. Not only is it absolutely delicious, but it is beautiful too. It looks just like a French bakery with the little penny tiles and um, the whole vibe says, you know, French bakery, but then it has the glass cases with these cakes and pies and cupcakes that are so beautiful like wedding beautiful gorgeous and you can watch them frosting cookies and cakes they have a little station where you can watch them and it's just gorgeous it's so pretty i have some footage of our trip to santa barbara and that is in the footage so stay tuned for the end of this video <laughs> to to watch my shaky my shaky vlog footage <laughs> okay what's next mm. this this I'm showing you this crazy silver bubble wrap thing because you need to see how this comes shipped if you decide to order this online. Although I've discovered they also carry this at Whole Foods. It's another foodie thing for people that eat weird diets. I have been, I think I'm halfway through a 90 day no chocolate challenge. Uh, I went no dark chocolate, no any kind of chocolate, no cacao of any kind. Uh, about, I don't know, a month and a half ago or so when I was listening to a doctor talk about chronic pain and how if you have a milk allergy or a milk sensitivity, which I do, casein, the protein in milk, he was saying you absolutely then 100% have a cacao sensitivity. I don't know if that's true, but he recommends a 90-day challenge to, to not eat it to see how it affects you so I was like well I can just see for myself right so I ordered myself a bunch of carob because I'm a big chocolate eater like chocolate is one of my main treats I sprinkle uh, cacao nibs on my little chia bowls that I make or on my sweet potatoes and I keep like dark chocolate in my nightstand because when I'm reading at night I'll have like a square or two I used to always have like my mushroom hot chocolate <laughs> at night that I would make bulletproof style. So I was like, oh my God, like I didn't even realize how much chocolate I had until I went around <laughs> filling up a bag <laughs> to get rid of it. And, um, and it wasn't like I was like stuffing my face with chocolate all the time. I just liked to keep it around and have little sprinkles of it. If I saw dark chocolate, I buy mostly raw dark chocolate or just really, really high quality organic chocolate, and it's expensive. So if you see it on sale, or if you find like a special brand, it's good to stockpile it, right? So you don't run out. Uh, a little ways into the challenge, I was like, I think I better get some carob, which tastes like chocolate, or it's supposed to, in case like the urge for some chocolate hits. And, um, in the past, when I had tried carob, I thought it was really gross. I didn't like it, so I was a little bit hesitant. I went online. It was quite a hunt to find carob candies, is what I was looking for, um, that were decent, that looked decent. And I found this company called Missy J's, and every single thing that I ordered from Missy J's is awesome. I was so amazed. I was like, 
I do like carob. I do. <laughs> I also have been taking just carob chips and like crunching them up with a rock. I put them in a bag and then I crunch them up with a rock and then I've been sprinkling those on whatever. What I used to sprinkle cacao nibs on, I sprinkle the the carob nibs on. But Missy J's, hmm, that is linked down below. This is maybe, I, I'm gonna keep saying everything is my favorite. Everything is my favorite except this. How about that? <laughs> Can I say that? But this is really, really good. It's like a carob caramel turtle and it has nuts in it. I forget what, what kind of nuts, but sorry, I can't see you. Let me pull that up. Yeah, okay. So here is this. It looks kind of gross in the plastic with the lights bouncing off it, but I promise you it doesn't taste gross. This is very good. This is blow your mind, freaky delicious, holy crap, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> the peanut butter cups, whoa. I don't know what is in here. I feel like there's like little like puffed rice or something like along the bottom of it. So it has like a little crunch. My God, my God, my God. <laughs> what I'm showing you right now is the last of what I ordered. I definitely have to order more. But the last one of these that I ate, I brought to Wonder Woman. I put it in my purse and when I took it out, it was like flat as a pancake and I was sitting next to I, I Amber was with me again and I was sitting next to this teenage boy because the theater was packed you know you have to sit next to strangers and I'm sitting there like licking the paper because I could not I couldn't I'm not gonna waste it that's for sure so that guy was probably grossed out by me but I did it anyway <laughs> these are really good and yes Phoebe lime is a really good touch mint I bought these because they were mint sea salt. You can see they're almost gone. There's quite a few in here. This would make a really cute gift for someone that can't eat chocolate. I did not realize there was lime in these until I got the package and I was like, oh, lime? <laughs> That's weird. Mint and lime, guess what? It's also really delicious. These are very, 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 very good. You guys see I'm very enthusiastic. I get enthusiastic about food. If you follow me on Instagram, you know this. <laughs> I am not only a book nerd and a tarot nerd, I am a food nerd, like so nerdy about it. I get very excited. This is the other one that I ordered. This one's even more gone. Coconut almond sea salt. Wow. 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 <laughs> Missy J's, oh my God. That is linked down below. I also had a lovely, I will call her a fan. Um, she knitted this for me. I, I think it's crochet. Is this so cool? She sent this in the mail with like no card or, and I couldn't read the name on the address. And I was like, oh my gosh, is this homemade? And finally, um, she wrote me and was like, did you get the thing I sent? I was like, that was you? <laughs> Look at this, it's like a crossbody crossbody bag it's too long to put in the whole video like it starts here dunk, 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 dunk. but look at that isn't that cool i think that's so cool whenever i see the colors red and black together i get a little thrill because when i was in the fifth grade kim cleaver's mother told us that only sluts wear black and red that you should never wear black and red together so of course i wanted to wear black and red together <laughs> thank you nora for knitting me this. That is amazing that you take the time to do that. Thank you so much. Another really cool present that I got in the mail from Melissa. Melissa sent me a little haul of incense, including rope incense, which I have no idea how to burn. So if you know how to burn rope incense, I would love to hear about it in the comments down below. They're like little short ropes with a wick. Uh, so I'm sure I can Google it whatever. Um, but the big thing that she sent me, uh, do you remember the mega vlog that I did at the beginning of the year where I lost my mind about La La Land? I saw La La Land in the theaters twice. I'm obsessed with the soundtrack. I listen to it all the time. I'm obsessed with Emma, Sho Emma Stone's shoes, which I keep trying to buy, but they, I don't think they're going to make any more. They only have five and a halfs in the, in the online outlets that do sell them. And my foot is much bigger than a five and a half. Um, 
And I've written to the companies to be like, are you going to get any more in? And they always say no. So I did finally break down and buy some beige ones that are so cute. I love them. And they're swing dance shoes. So every time I wear them, I'm like, mm -hmm. city of lights. Are you shining just for me? I get very, I love my shoes too. I'm a shoe nerd. <laughs> anyway, she told Somehow she was hooked up with or knew the designer, Kyle Chan, of the necklace that Emma Stone wears all through the movie, but especially in the beginning. And she told him about me that I was like a La La Land super fan and I had made this video. And so he sent this. Oh, Emma Stone's necklace from La La Land. <laughs> Oh my God. Thank you, Melissa. You are so friggin' cool for setting that up for me. And I love wearing this. Whenever I put it on, I'm always like in the mood to think about or pursue my still, like, I still have a thing about Hollywood, my Hollywood dreams. So I love wearing this. This is so not my style. This is my style. Big, loud, obnoxious, hippie stuff. This is so delicate and beautiful. It's like a gold chain with I think this is a topaz on it but I have to tell you I get so many compliments on this every time I wear it people ask me about it and of course I'm happy to tell them the story that I got it from Kyle Chan <laughs> the designer and that it was Emma Stone's um, necklace look how cute this packaging is or how nice this is very like mm, velvety kind of it's so nice and it's got like the little bag so I linked to his jewelry line. He has a La La Land collection. So if you're a La La Land nut, maybe check that out. I definitely am. And moving on. Oh, I love Dick. I love Dick. Have you seen I Love Dick on Amazon? Ugh. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It is um, an Amazon. It's Amazon Prime, but I think you can probably like pay for the episodes if you don't have Amazon Prime. Although that would be probably more expensive than buying just Amazon Prime. <laughs> but oh my God, it's so good. Katherine Hahn kills it. She kills it in this very quirky, eccentric, unique TV show. Kevin Bacon is Dick and um, Griffin Dune it forms the third party in what is basically like this very screwed up love triangle that has you like, I like TV shows that make you cringe, like you don't want to look away, but people are, you know, just kind of making fools of themselves in a way that maybe you relate to. So you're just like, oh my God, oh my God, stop it. <laughs> it's like that. And I would mention like three or four of the supporting cast members, but they have last names I can't pronounce, but some of the supporting cast is awesome. And this was the first time I had ever seen them before. So I was in love with I Love Dick so much that I wrote a little, um, I cut and pasted part of a review from Bustle Magazine because it's more coherent than my ranting and raving about how awesome it is. <laughs> this is why it's awesome. What makes I Love Dick so important is how it portrays Chris's unapologetic quest for Dick's attention. Chris is Katherine Hahn. It's really Katherine Hahn's show. It is, it's all about her. Um, mo most visual representations of female desire are weighed down by social scripts that dictate women cannot be in control of their own sexual needs. With the narrative like I Love Dick, viewers get to see a woman use her sexual fantasies to fuel a creative journey of self-discovery and art. And I love that, her sexual fantasies to fuel a creative journey of self-discovery and art. That really ties in with what so many of us believe about how the sacral chakra is like the vortex of energy from which not only babies spring and sexual desire, but also our creativity. And it also kind of just jives with my idea that all magic is sex magic because it's a creative act, right? And um, even, even sex magic in the traditional term of the word is like use raising 
sexual energy and then like directing it at a desired effect to create whatever it is you're trying to create. So again, her using her sexual fantasies to fuel a creative journey of self-discovery and art. And I will add again, it's such an awkward, like a deliciously awkward, cringeworthy journey. It's so good. I hope it gets another, another season. And another show that does not need a plug because it's so famous, but I loved it so much. And I hear it's gonna be a few years before we get a season three. Um, Aziz, how do you say Aziz's last name? Aziz Ansari, I always forget his last name. He's just Aziz to me, but his show, Master of None, is definitely a labor of love. Oop, my, my son's home, huh? Sorry, my son just walked in. <laughs> Aziz Ansari's show, Master of None. Season one was very, very good on Netflix. Season two, is the most adorable, romantic, sweet thing I have ever seen in my whole ad life. Oh my God, if you have not watched Master of None, you are missing out on something that is so authentic and sincere and personal. I love to see men portrayed as good guys, not dicks, speaking of I love dick. <laughs> And Aziz and his friends, for the most part, are, they're, they have good hearts. They're the men out there that, that women long to find, you know what I mean? And um, that's not what the show is about, but that's, that's one of the things that I took from it. But Master of None, it's so cinematic. It actually, the first season takes place in New York, so it was like a shock when season two starts and they're in Italy. And they did a couple of episodes in Italy to start the season, which introduced us to, what is her name? Where did I put it? Alessandra Mastronardi. Alessandra Mastronardi. She is one of the prettiest women I have ever seen externally, but also she has that amazing, beautiful glow. Like when you can see someone's soul in their eyes and the most beautiful smile, I totally see why any man or woman on the planet would fall madly in love with this woman. Like on first sight, she is magical. And she really made season two what it is, I think. And um, so if you haven't seen Master of None and you have Netflix, you are missing out. I'm telling you, it is such a good, unique, cool show. And no, not everything I'm into is witchy. I am definitely a well-rounded witch. I love my food, I love my books, I love my movies, I love my music, I love my TV shows, I love my necklaces. I love it all. <laughs> oh, where is this? I have this. Okay, so here's another random thing. I, at night, I have like this little routine that I do in bed. I'll play whatever, Master of None, like one episode of a TV show I'm into, or I will watch a YouTube video, and then I go, Angelina Jolie called this a lotion coma once, and I always think of that. <laughs> I go into a lotion coma. <laughs> I, I'm really into shea butter primarily, so I'm always on the hunt for like a good shea butter product. Um, but I also like, like really good high quality body butters. But, um, and then I just sit there and I like, I do my hands, but I do like these really like deep foot massages of my feet. <laughs> Sometimes I even do my neck. I do like my own neck while I'm sitting there like watching TV on my laptop in bed. But I was on the hunt for the yummiest smelling shea butter I could find. I was in Sprouts and I found this. And again, I can't see you, dang it. I keep covering myself up because I, I would never be able to move forward if I could see myself talk. It's very awkward for me. <laughs> Shea butter, Nubian heritage, patchouli and burriti. I think I'm saying that right, burriti, shea butter. When I opened this, I'm gonna open it right now. Lord have mercy. When I opened this in the store, it was like an immediate yes. Like I was sniffing all of the different lotions and potions and stuff and then I just stopped when I got to this one I was like oh my god like it's very white and clean um I'm tempted to just like bust it out and go into the lotion coma right now but I was like I I know that like the smell was familiar to me but I couldn't put my finger on it 
And then the first night that I was using it again, I was like, what does this smell like? I know this smell. What is this? What is this? What is this? It's a delicious smell, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And then when I woke up the next morning, my sheets and blanket smelled like it. And I was like, I know what it is. Do you remember Terry Mugler's perfume, Angel? It came in this very witchy celestial bottle that like looked like a star that was supposed to perfectly fit in your hand. And it was supposed to be aphrodisiac because it contained chocolate and it was very, very popular. It was very strong. Um, I used to wear it. I stopped wearing it. I used to wear the perfume and then I switched to the lotion because people said the perfume was really strong. So I was just wearing the lotion one day when I worked at Warner Brothers and this guy, Norm, <laughs> came in, came off the set into my office and he goes, it smells like a French hooker in here. <laughs> I was like, that's me. So I actually stopped wearing it after that because I didn't realize how strong it was. Um, so this is not that strong. This is a much milder, gentler, softer version of that. But it reminds me of that. And it's so, it's so good. And I love waking up in the morning and my sheets and my blankets smell like it. Or the next day, if I go like this, it like reactivates it and I just, I think I'm almost all the way done with my list here. What else do I have? This is just like a giant haul. I don't normally do this, but there were so many good things I wanted to talk about. This, oh, I don't have her with me. My friend Marla, has, she's bought me a few skulls. I love skulls. I have a skull crystal collection that started with a tiny fluorite, fluorite skull named Frank. And I have quite a few skull crystals, crystal skulls. But um, my friend Marla started buying me skulls when she would go on vacation. And she's gotten me a couple, three, I think. Three really cool skulls. And the third one she got, it's so cool. I, I named her Maria, thanks to Instagram, but she has a floral crown. So it's a skull with a floral crown. And then she sent this with it, Moonology, which is a book working with the magic of lunar cycles. This is a book that I'm aware of that Amazon shows me just based on my buying history. Amazon thinks I would really like this book. <laughs> Guess what, Amazon, you're right, I do, I do. Thank you so much, Marla, for this book. Um, and I hope you're not watching this video right now, which I, you will realize in a minute why that is, <laughs> but um, it's so cool. She, what's her name? Yasmin Boland. She breaks down the moon phases into eight different cycles. And then there's just a lot of like juicy, fun content on how to work with the different cycles and work with the different houses that the moon is in and work with the different signs that the moon is in. Um, I did moon mapping last year where I followed the moon through my houses and it really, really helped get in touch with not just my own natal chart, but just what the different signs represent, what the different houses represent. And then this book is just a really fun way to kind of continue that journey. So it's awesome. The thing if Marla, if you're watching this, you need to pause this video until after Friday. <laughs> because on Friday, I have a present for Marla. Um, it's her birthday. Last year, we went to see The Love Witch. We went to see the premiere of The Love Witch on her birthday, which was amazing. And now like the internet has exploded with love for The Love Witch. And I feel super duper cool that we got to be there first and see it, see the premiere and, and, uh, you know, where the whole cast comes up after and you can ask them questions and talk to the director and all that. It was super fun. This year, we are just going to lunch. Uh, and I got her these. Hold on, let me see again the camera. Look at this. Ooh, it is a mala. These are agate, some kind of green agate. What is the name of these here? Indian agate handmade knotted mala. I love working with my mala beads. I have, mine are a little bit bigger than this. Like the beads are a little bit bigger and mine are black with a red silk tassel and cord. I love that. That is one of my favorite spiritual practices because it makes meditating just easy. You don't end up watching the clock and it gives you kind of something to do. It gives your mind and body just enough to do 
but nothing complicated. So it's like, it's kind of a distraction for your mind. Like the monkey mind is like, here, do this, count these beads. And then, you know, the deeper part of you can, can get into like a meditative state. I'm a big fan of mala beads. There are 108 beads on this mala. And I got it um, at a store called Prana Heart because of Joanna, another Joanna in the Psycho Spiritual Wheel of the Year group. Was it Joanna or Joan Marie? It was Joanna. I think it was Joanna. Sorry, Joanna, if I got that wrong, or Joan Marie. It was Joanna. <laughs> How could I forget? My name is Joanna. Um, she shared a link to where she loves to buy her mala beads, and I was like, oh my god, like the prices are crazy, because mala beads are really, really expensive. If you get high quality, hand knotted mala beads with real stones, they can get very pricey, like starting at $50, you know, but more like $70 and then up over $100. And I can't remember how much I paid for these, but I'm pretty sure it was less than $20. And they're fabulous. And I only need one set of mala beads. So when she first recommended, I was like, oh my God, I want those and I want those. There's a blue agate set that is stunning. The colors are beautiful. But like the first birthday that came around, I was like, I know exactly where I'm going <laughs> because I just wanted an excuse to buy a set of these mala beads. And Marla is a redhead. And um, so I think this color looks, whoops. Green looks so pretty on a redhead. And people sometimes like to twist these around and wear them on their wrists. I don't do that. I keep mine on my altar, but I highly recommend going to Prana heart if you are in the business of getting yourself some mala beads because amazing the prices are so 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 very good and i think i'm at the end of this yes there's a link to the lilac patisserie place that i mentioned and i ramble ramble rambled and um if i forgot something i'll i'll find another place to ramble on about it <laughs> don't forget to leave a comment down below if you want to be entered in the giveaway and i don't think i'm going to announce that Mm, I guess I'll announce it in the next video that I do here and um, and then if I don't hear from the person after that I'll just I'll try to shoot you a message like yo you won you won the book how do I get this thing to you <laughs> um, yeah so until we meet again here's my my random shaky vlog footage and much love to you peace I'm going to Santa Barbara. My friend Amber is on her way and we are going to hang out in Santa Barbara for the day and go see Elizabeth Gilbert's whatever big magic speech she's given tonight at, uh, is it UCL, UC Santa Barbara, I think? Um, I don't even know. We're going to see Liz Gilbert and we're excited. And I wanted to show you my outfit because it's very like Janis Joplin meets pregnant lady. This thing is huge. Let me get it, let me get it like wow It's like right now It's like wow Crazy floral print and roses they're wilting but I need to document them for all time because we got a rose bush on our property it's very exciting how cool I'm standing out here waiting for my friend Amber in my front yard and uh Underneath this palm tree, it has formed like, if you look up at it, like a perfect mandala. I don't know if you guys can see that, because I can only film it at an angle. Wow! That mother nature, she's so crafty. Hello! Hi, lady! Look at the French penny tiles! Lilac patisserie, a French bakery, a Dedicated gluten free French bakery. Can you believe it? Oh my god. Oh, what I do with a woman. This is beautiful, gorgeous, fabulous punk rock Amber. And her beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous food. And my beautiful, fabulous, gorgeous food. <laughs> And feel. Go lay you down on my favorite gown. Wrap your face in hair, and then I take you there.
filming things. There's me and Amber. Pretty. Pretty. What is the name of this theater? Granada. Wild Woman! Wonder Woman! Wonder Woman! Wonder Woman! Wonder Woman! Hi! Here we are on a Tuesday night. Where are we going? The party thing. What's the party thing for? You know, the library. It's not at a library. It's a bookstore. A bookstore. Ta-da! This is what has become of Sunset Boulevard. I used to party on this street. They just tore down... Um, Sorry, I'm walking in really high heels. It's very bouncy. These. <laughs> uh, they just tore down the House of Blues, where I went to a lot of cool concerts and an Oscar party. Uh, and they're gonna put up a big high rise, so. That's the way sunset's going, but look, here we are, book suit, buddy. John Didion on a giant $10 bill. That's very appropriate. I am reading Slouching Toward Bethlehem right now. Check this out. The Edward Gorey Fan Todd Pack. Look at this. Look at this. This is the book. Yeah. The Insects. The Waltzing Mouse. The Ladder. The Child. I love the Child. How cool is that? Wow. There's the lovely author in her, her pool card t-shirt. <laughs> Those are cookies, Tanner. Book cookies. Well, I don't think they're gluten-free, but they sure are cool. For the love of preserving history's fragile remnants, and now Simile was en route to his estate in Switzerland to place his treasures in the hands of people who could preserve them just as well. Uh, one, what did you win, Tanner? Can I see? Hey. All right, and then the last Palm reading and a little pack of tarot cards? That's awesome. Good for you. You won the raffle. I got the picker. Which kind? Like, probably the insects. Oh, this one doesn't have insects. This is different. You got your own little tarot deck, Tanner? That is really neat. Well, that's This one's a magic. How cute. They're doing tarot card readings. Um, for free for the for the book reading, isn't that sweet? Tanner just got his first professional tarot reading. What did you think? It was fabulous. It was fabulous. Yeah. It was a good one. Yeah. A romantic thriller uh, revolving around divination and intuition, and uh, the story is about an antiquities appraiser, and she is on assignment in Switzerland. She has gone there to appraise a private collection. Uh, uh, of a collector who's passed away and so the collection is going to be disbanded she's going to take the most important pieces back to New York and auction them off and where her firm is and then uh, create mini collections that will be donated to libraries and museums so she's on assignment in Switzerland doing this huge uh, task and she finds a um, she finds a mysterious manuscript that has been secreted away from the rest of the collection. And so she starts translating this and it's written in ancient Greek. And it turns out that this is a memoir that's over 2000 years old, written in the time of Cleopatra in Alexandria, Egypt. And so the, the novel alternates between the present day story simile translating this and the actual memoir story. 